Oh, check it. Oh, hi folks, this is Al with BombBuild.com. Here with another instructional video for the BDT, the Bolt Together Drift Trike that you put together yourself. This video is just one in a series of videos intended to be used in combination with the build plans available through BombBuilds.com or through eBay, username Auto Beverage. This video will cover drawing 350, which is the main assembly for the two-seat drift trike. Now, if you're getting ready to do this assembly, you should have already put together all the sub-assemblies that got you to this point. So here we are at the shop. Let's get started. And here is our clean work area for drawing 350, step one, with all the parts laid out on the table. Let's take a look at our drawing for step one. Now uh, you can see here we have, as usual, a bill of material in the lower right-hand corner, assembly notes in the upper left-hand corner, various views, including an exploded view and a section view through the axle. Now, for this main assembly, we have multiple sheets in this drawing. I wanted to show you that. Uh, but we're going to cover them one step at a time. So for this particular step, one, we only need sheet one. Let's take a look at the tools necessary for step one. We have a 5 16 one quarter inch, 5 32nd, and 1 8 Allen key. We have a 3 quarter inch socket, a 7 16 socket, a ratchet, and extension. We'll need this extension to get down into the deep dish wheel, and a large crescent wrench. Let's take a look at the hardware needed for this first step. Of uh, we have our appropriate hardware laid out in the uh, counted quantities pulled from the bag. Now let's take a look at the parts as well. We have the frame assembly, the wheels drawing 303, sprocket assembly, which I believe was drawing 302. And looking at the rest of the parts, these are going to be purchased. Uh, and all the information necessary where to purchase these parts will be in the build plans. Uh, let's take a look at the bearings, the pillow block bearings. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going with a blackout axle theme. You don't have to do that. I just uh, think it'll be a nice look for this one. If you choose to uh, go with a colored axle theme, then you'll, you'll paint your pillow block bearings accordingly. In my case, they're black. Uh, when they come, they will be a machine gray color. Um, of course, the sprocket is painted to match. The wheel hubs are painted to match. Um, these will come as a just a machined aluminum color. Something else to note with these, this hardware, this bolt and nut, will be included with this piece. You just need to thread it in from the back side, just as I've done here. Uh, here's your collars, again, painted black. Here's the axle. Uh, now, I just painted the very middle section and you'll note that I measured the halfway point. The reason being is when we go to slip this axle through this hole in the frame that'll help me center the axle so there's an even distance sticking out from both ends of the vehicle. So I had to paint the middle section because that area will be inside this tube and I won't be able to get to it later. If you're not painting then obviously you don't have to do that. Let's take a look at the chain You'll have to cut this to length later. Uh, of course, there's a master link and then a half link if needed, and we'll cover that later as well. Let's take a look at the keys, the shaft keys. There's a quantity of three in your bill of material, but you'll see in the drawing notes that you'll need to shorten one. And the reason being is one of these goes in your sprocket assembly. The other two will go in your wheel hubs, so the length is fine. But with the sprocket assembly, these collars will go one on both sides of this. So your key cannot stick out beyond the width of the hub. So you'll measure your hub width from here to the other surface. And you'll cut your key to that length because we don't want the key sticking out. We want this collar to bear directly against that face uh, on that side and directly against this face on this side. Now you can use a hacksaw to cut this or a cutoff wheel or whatever means that you may have. So that's it for the parts and the hardware, the drawing, and the tools. So let's get started with step one.
We're going to start by taking the axle, which is item 8, and sliding it through the slot in our frame. Now you'll note that I put, some, I put a rag in here, and that's just to keep this uh, paint from being scratched up and keep the axle from being scratched up. You want your axle to be completely burr-free. In other words, uh, you know, you, you can't have any little sharp edges here because the, the close-fitting components like the sprocket hub and the bearing and everything won't slide over. So you should probably check all your components by sliding them on ahead of time. Uh, remember the mark that we put here in the middle of the axle. Again, that's just to help center it in the frame. So I'm just going to slide that right in there. And just uh, by eye and looking straight in the end here, I'm going to be able to determine that this is centered. Another way to do it is, is reference the length that sticks out on each end. Uh, and if you'd like, you can do that with a tape measure and just shift it back and forth until that's in the right spot. And next, we want to just start sliding components on. Now, we want to refer to the drawing because we want to make sure that all components on this side of the frame get put on and all components on that side of the frame get put on before the bearings are slid on because once the bearings are slid on it'll be fastened to the frame and then we won't be able to slide any of the components past that so just take a look at the partial exploded view and the section view and start sliding your components on now one thing to to note is the orientation of the components and we talked about this on some of the other drawings and assemblies that we put together. This bearing has a collar that sticks out on one side where the set screws are. Note that in the drawing that that collar is on the outside. So you want to make sure that that's oriented correctly. Same thing with the sprocket assembly. You have a hub on one side that sticks out and nothing that sticks out on the other side. So you want to make sure that you have that oriented correctly and you want to make sure that you slide the components on in the right order. Now um, you can remove them as you need to uh, up until the point where you put put the bearings in place and then after that you'll have to remove the bearings. So I'm going to start by sliding all the components on the left hand side of the frame onto the axle and then I'll be back. Okay now I have all the left hand side components on the shaft and they're all just slid on there in the right uh, order and the right orientation of flanges. Nothing is tight yet, everything's loose. Now note that I had to pull this I had to pull this shaft back out a little bit to let the sprocket clear this angle here. So we'll just push it back into the center and we'll center that up um, as we go. You know, to, to, before we tighten everything down, we'll center up the axle. Okay, so all parts are on there, they're loose, they're movable. Uh, and not locked down. Uh, something you might want to add to the tool list is a uh, is a rubber mallet. It can help with some of the, you know just just getting some of the components moving along the shaft. So we're going to move on and put the components on the right hand side. They'll go on um, just like the uh, section view shows you. It's basically a mirror image of this side, less the sprocket assembly and the two collars. So I'll do all that and I'll be back. And the axle components on the right hand of the shaft were put on same way, just slid into place. Nothing tight yet. Be sure to get your keys in there. There's a key on each wheel hub. Note also that uh, we're not putting the wheels on just yet. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that later. So the next step we want to do is we want to take our hardware and we want to get these bearings put in place. Remember there's a, uh, there's a slot in your uh, bearing housing so you'll, you'll need a washer over your nut. So let's just uh, get these into place. Just the way. So three more of those to go which I'll do off camera and we'll be right back. So we've tightened up our hardware items four, five, and six on both sides of the bearing, uh, both bearings. So one thing to note, uh, I kept this surface flush. The top surface of the bearing is flush with the top of this bracket. Now this bracket is the exact same length as the bearing so you should be flush on both ends that'll help give it a good look and and keep the bearing and the axle in perfect alignment then you fully tighten these four bolts two here two on the other side now let's take a look at our axle looking straight down in the middle you can see the paint mark right there where I have 
this centered in place. At this point, if it's not centered, just use your rubber mallet or your hand and tap it back and forth till you're centered. Of course, if you'd like, you can use a tape measure and measure out evenly on both ends. So once your axle is even in the middle, you can go ahead and use your 1 8 Allen key here and lock these collars down. Remember, there's two set screws per bearing. Uh, and then you're also going to slide this collar all the way over against and lock it down using your Allen key as well. So I'll take care of that and we'll be back. The next step is we're going to remove these small, three small nuts from our wheel hub here. Um, you can leave the big axle nut on the end. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our wheel and we're going to put that on there and line it up. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. So I've slipped the wheel over the wheel hub. Here's a view from the back side. So what I've done is I went ahead and I used my extension and my 716 socket. And I put the three, let's call them lug nuts because that's basically what they are. I slid the wheel over the lugs temporarily and just snugly by hand installed the three lug nuts. And what that does is that pulls the wheel together with the wheel hub and makes them essentially one piece. Now remember that the wheel hub is not locked to the shaft yet. It's free to move back and forth. What we want to look at now is we want to look at this gap. We want to make sure that this wheel will spin freely. So I've left about a quarter inch to three eighths gap there. And you'll want to do the same evenly from side to side. So we have the gap set where we wanted. So what I'm going to do is come in here with a Sharpie and I'm going to make a line here right where the back side of that hub ends up on the shaft. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the three lug nuts, slide the wheel back off, then we can lock our wheel hub to our shaft and then reinstall the wheel. I'm going to jump back in here momentarily just to show you a better look at this with the wheel, wheel removed. You see we have our line there and we have our hub, our, our uh, Sharpie line in our hub. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that the keyway is in there and you see that it is. It's fully engaged. We want to make sure it's fully engaged, not sticking out, especially on this end because the wheel has to rest against this surface, right? This nut has to rest against this surface. So the key cannot stick out on this side. If the key is a little long, it can stick out on this side. Okay? So with our wheel hub lined up with our Sharpie mark, we can go ahead and take our quarter inch Allen key and lock that fast. After that, we can take our large adjustable wrench, or if you have a socket big enough, and then run this lock nut right down on this bearing. Do that for both sides, and then reinstall the wheel with the three lug nuts, firmly tighten them, and that'll do it. And with both of the rear wheels on, that about does it for assembly step one. Just want to note a couple things. We have still not locked this position down. It's free to slide along this axle. That will happen in one of the later assembly steps that are coming right up. You'll note that I did paint over to a certain extent, but not, not in the area where we're going to be making adjustments. So that I, I completed my blackout theme. Same thing on this side. Painted all the way up to here. I just masked that off by using some cardboard, but I wanted to get all the way up to here on this side because the engine, once we put it on, it'll be a little bit more difficult to get in there. So uh, one final note, when you go to tighten the axle nuts, of course the, uh, the axle is going to try to spin on you, so you can always just use the, the old screwdriver method. Get it pried up in there to, to lock that in place as you tighten the axle nut. So that does it for step one. So let's move on to assembly step Two. Here is our clean work area for step two of drawing 350, main assembly for the two seat drift trike. We have all our components necessary for this step, hardware, tools laid out on a clean work surface. And here's our drawing for step two, which is sheet number two. And as always, it has a bill of material in the lower right hand corner with assembly notes in the upper left hand corner. Um, there's a lot of assembly notes on this and a couple detail drawings that we'll be observing throughout this assembly step. Let's take a look at the tools necessary for this step. We have a 1 8 a 3 16 and a 5 16 Allen key. We have a 3 quarter socket 
and a ratchet. Now let's take a look at the components necessary. Here's our frame assembly with the rear axle installed from step one. And we have our front fork assembly with bearings, which you put together in assembly 307. And also our hardware, in this case uh, just three pieces, all half inch hardware, bolts, nuts, and washers. Mm. My wife makes the best bacon, doesn't she? Oh, we're rolling. Oh, now here we are at step two, where we're going to assemble the front fork with bearing. This is drawing 307. You had already put this together. Recall from that assembly that we have the bottom bearing set screws tight and all the remaining hardware is loose. So we're going to take and we're going to assemble this right to our bearing mounting angles here, starting with the lower bearing first. So I'm going to take our half inch bolts with a washer and loosely bolt those in place and we'll be back. Okay, we installed our half inch hardware uh, in the lower and upper bearing. Now, note that the button head goes on this side because this is the side you're going to see. In a future step, there's going to be a cover plate over this. So we'll, we'll use that cover plate to cover these. So in this case, the washer goes on the back side, anywhere there's a slot. So there's a slot in the bearing housing, washer, then nut. So I have all four of these snug down. Not completely tight, but snug. The next thing we want to do is check and make sure that the orientation of our wheel is correct. You want the brake caliper and the disc to be on the left hand side of the vehicle. Now it is possible to do it like that. Now you'll see that the tire will hit over here so you'll see something's not quite right. So spin it around and our next step is you're going to want to get up in a high position here and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to center this lobe. You'll see there's two angles on this thing and what's going to happen is those angles when you go left and right are going to be a steering wheel and travel stop so this surface here will bear against that surface in both directions so what we want to do is we want to get the wheel centered just like that. And then we want to get our steering stop lobe assembly centered. And then what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll make a mark right between the shaft and the stop lobe. And then we'll need to remove this bearing again. Recall these set screws are not tight on the bearing. We'll remove that, make sure our mark that we just put is centered, and then we'll lock these two screws and the set screw on this collar in place. We'll do that and we'll be back. So we've made our alignment mark which is what we have here. A mark on the steering lobe and a mark on the shaft to represent the uh, center of the lobe when the steering wheel is straight. Let's, uh, let's go to the drawing and, and explain exactly what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. When the steering wheel is straight, we want the wings, the angles on that steering lobe piece to be equal so that when you turn the wheel to the left, it will stop at a certain angle. And when you turn the wheel to the right, the handlebars to the right, it'll stop at the same angle on the other side. We're just trying to center it up. Same thing here in the other direction. We just want this steering lobe to be about centered between those bearings. So back up here, here's our, here's our little wing angles that you saw in the drawing. And there's the mark we just made. So now with the upper bearing off, we're going to go ahead and tighten these, tighten these with our 3 16 Allen wrench. And also the set screw in the collar as well. Let's tighten those three things, reinstall our upper bearing, and then lock everything in place, and we'll come back. And we got all our hardware snugged down. So, this is what we look like here. Uh, we've Recall we had our alignment there, we had the bearing off. We tightened these screws. You're going to want to tight the set, tighten the set screw uh, first on the collar, and then these two. 
and then you'll reinstall your bearing and when you do that pay attention to the orientation you want the set screw down just like it's shown here and then you'll run all the hardware in snug and you'll also want to square up the bearings with the bearing mounting angles here and you can do that easily by just tapping them around a little bit with a rubber mallet until it's all squared up on the corners like that and then lock everything in place and now your steering stop lobe is going to serve as a stop in each direction just like that and this will keep you from twisting up your brake cable and your throttle cable if you let go of the handlebar in any situation so instead of the wheel spinning all the way around and breaking your throttle cable and your brake cable it'll stop so with that you are done with step two let's move on now to step three and here's our clean work area for step three as you can see we just have the completed trike through step two and we have the handlebar assembly. And here's our drawing for step three, as usual, a bill of material in the lower right hand corner. In this case, only one component, and that is assembly 304, the handlebar assembly, which you would have put together in an earlier video. We also have assembly notes and the various views. Let's take a look at the tools. We'll need a 5mm Allen key, a 6mm Allen key, and a Phillips screwdriver. So the handlebar assembly, drawing 304, will have a protective plastic cap on it, or may have one on it. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that, and then you can see there's a wedge here. Let me show that to you. This is a typical bike stem. This is nothing new. So as you tighten this screw at the top, this wedge will draw in and, and cinch this uh, handlebar stem to the uh, fork stem. So we're simply going to slip this right down inside the hollow opening of the fork tube that you just put into place there okay and we're going to remember that the throttle goes on the right hand side and the brake on the left hand side so I'm just going to slip this right down in there just like that now Eventually, we're going to want to align this handlebar such that when the handlebar is even, the, the steering wheel is straight, obviously. And we'll also want to adjust it up and down. But for now, I'm simply going to take my 6 millimeter screw and I'm going to snug this up so it stays in place. I'll do that and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And you see I put the throttle over the handlebar and just snugged up our Phillips screws. Now, I got some tape on there just to keep that from uh, pulling out of there unexpectedly. Uh, it shouldn't do that, but a little bit of tape will help. Now, I wanted to point out on the other end of the cable here, uh, these two nuts that were threaded on there, I removed those. I just put a little bit of heat shrink over the end of the cable to keep it from fraying as we start to thread it back through. We're going to go down through our frame and out the back. Now. Um, Let's take a look at that route real quick. We're going to go in through here, and we're going to go down through here, and there's an access hole. If I zoom in there real close, I think you can see it. There's a hole that leads to this member. So we're going to thread our cable back through here, and then out here on just the right side only, there's going to be a hole back in here. Now, it's hard to see because it's dark, but that's where our uh, cable will come out through, and then eventually we'll connect to the engine right down in here. So, one other thing I want to do. There's an overlay on this cable. See, there's an extra, right here, there's an extra covering, an extra sheath on this cable. I'm going to pull that off because I think it's just going to make matters difficult to get back in through there. This is a nice, tough case right here. We don't need this extra case. It's just going to make it difficult to thread back in there. So I'm just going to slide that right off before we move on. And now that we have our outer rubber sheath removed, we're going to start out by just going ahead and threading this right down through this hole and keep it moving. Um, and you see it trying to come out here. We're going to keep this moving right down through. It's kind of hard for me to do with one hand, but you get the picture. 
we're down here and next we're getting ready to go right down in that hole there as you can see there you go see see that headed down there so we're just gonna go ahead and thread that down there make the turn and start out through the back so let me keep feeding and we'll be back okay we're back and we can see our access hole here let me just zoom out show you where that's at that's down here on the right side only now you can see we reached in there and grabbed the cable now we need to take a pair of needle nose pliers reach in there and grab that threaded end uh, one note these two screws right here if they get in your way because they're going down through the frame if they get in your way you can temporarily remove those and then put them back in place I didn't have to do that I was able to thread it through there so next we're going to reach down in there and see if we can pull that out so we used our pliers to pull our cable out to our access hole and you can see we have plenty extra here on the end now back up front here we want to we want to make this loop comfortable up here so pull enough slack out of the back to make that comfortable so when you turn this handlebar here you don't want this cable uh, binding up in either direction you see that we got just the right amount of slack in there that we can go back and forth and that cable is always going to want to feed down through that hole so once you get that set you want to make sure that you leave that there and then go ahead and tighten your two uh, screws right here to uh, put the throttle in place once and for all next we're going to hook up our throttle cable at the engine itself and you see we have our excess cable laying there now if you're using the engine specified in the build plans you're going to see that the throttle here um, sticks now this is these engines are used for uh, log splitting and other stuff like that where where you want to set the throttle and leave it there so see how as I move it it doesn't it doesn't move we want that to spring back and forth so we can use it as a throttle so the only thing we have to do in this particular model is loosen that nut right there with a 10 millimeter wrench don't remove it just loose it a little bit and then that'll allow the spring to uh, make the throttle go back and forth the way we want it to so let me loosen that up and come back and show you okay so we used our 10 millimeter socket or wrench and see what happens now we got our spring throttle just the way we wanted it so there's that nut we loosened again right here so now we're gonna move on we're gonna take the end of the cable sleeve and we're gonna fasten that right down in here see that Phillips screw we're gonna loosen that up slide that cable under that u-clamp just like that and then we're gonna connect our working part of the cable right through this little hole here that's what's nice about these engines is they're already set up for a nice throttle now if you don't have this engine use a different engine than specified in the plans you'll just have to rig this throttle up yourself but I'm gonna go ahead and rig it up the way I described it and come back and show you we're back and we have our throttle hooked up we have our cable threaded down through this uh, barrel uh, this takes a 10 millimeter wrench to hold that nut on the underside then you'll thread this through the hole and clamp down with that and then here you're just clamping under this u-bolt now want to make sure that we have full range when we twist the handlebar so you see the throttle moving there sorry about the camera work I'm trying to work one-handed but you can see that when I twist this throttle we get full throttle range now you can see we have some excess cable if you want to you can always pull more cable through the sheath and then cut the sheath but I'm gonna just tidy mine up remember they can't hit the wheels obviously but it can't hit the axle either so I'm just gonna tidy mine up with some zip ties and come back and we're back and you'll see that I just added a couple zip ties here uh, to tidy this up and get it out of the way you want to make sure that it's not in the way of your starter not going to catch in on any other moving parts and then just again just recheck your operation of your throttle by uh, twisting your handle back and forth so that's it you've hooked up the throttle to reassemble the brake cable we're just going to do the reverse order of what we did with the bike disassembly if you can refer back to that video if you'd like first thing you're going to do is thread the end of the cable 
down through this hoop. And then recall these components, which were in the end of here. So we're just going to take, I took those out, I just simply unscrewed them. So we're going to fish this back up through here, just like that. Get that, uh, sorry about the camera work there, I'm trying to work one handed. But uh, so we got that, and then we're going to slip the spring over it as well. There we go, and just kind of push that up there. And then you're going to go back down through this hole right here, just like that. And then just re thread that. Okay. And then on the underside of the brake here, just uh, like you removed it, you're going to take your five millimeter wrench and you're going to slip this cable right in here and under that fork. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, and we'll be back. You can also refer to your bicycle manual as well. And with your brake properly adjusted, it's time to move on to step four.